All right, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. I am very pleased to have you with us today. Um, my name is Anissa Aven, and we're gonna get started here pretty quick. Um, I am excited to have expert speaker, trainer, team development um, consultant, Andrew Hill with us. Hello, Andy. Uh, good afternoon. And we're gonna talk about behavior shifts under crisis, critical insights for leaders and teams. We're just gonna give folks just one more second of to Zoom has opened the gates and, and we're gonna let folks in to join us. So thank you for joining us. Hello, welcome everyone. Welcome, this is our um, one, two, three, four, fifth talk today in the Leading in a Crisis, Business and uh, HR Strategies for Navigating Crisis and Change. So let's get started. I wanna say thank you for joining us. Today's talk is Behavior Shifts Under Crisis, Critical Insights for Leaders and Teams with expert Andrew Hill. Uh, and before we begin, I just want to say thank you to our sponsors today. Um, the Whitmarsh Consulting Group is a group of super talented human resources information technology consultants and multi-channel marketing experts. Without the Whitmarsh Consulting Group, our summit would not have taken a flight. So I'm very appreciative for David and his team. I also want to say thank you to our sponsor, Insperity. Insperity is HR that makes a difference. Um, Insperity, I asked, you know, what would you be willing to do for our, our registrants and for our participants on our calls? Uh, and they said, well, how about a free financial, an HR financial analysis report and debrief? And as I learned a little bit more about what that would entail, I realized it's kind of a big deal. It's an HR budget analysis, confidential report, and no obligation one-on-one -on -one debrief. And um, I found out that the, our business performance advisor over there will have to spend anywhere from three to 10 hours putting this together. And I said, you know, not everyone's gonna be a good fit for your services. Their services are, are, are pretty unique and they're special and they're great, but they're just not a great fit for everyone. And, and they said, that's not the point. Naturally, we're in business to do business, but what we're doing is wanting to help HR professionals and others who, you know, everything perhaps that they had planned all year long has just been thrown out the window. Um, and, you know, perhaps they had a full team less than six weeks ago and now not so much, or now they're having to deal with furloughs and, and outplacement and all kinds of things. So do take advantage of that. You can find out more at turnkeycoachingsolutions.net forward slash HR report. Next, I want to say um, a little bit about me and my company and what we've done here with the Leading in a Crisis Summit. Uh, my name is Anissa Aven, and my company, Turnkey Coaching and Development Solutions, provides enterprise learning and development solutions that we say we drive business results and improve organizational culture. And that is, in fact, why I started the company many years ago, 2003. I really felt like that if we could um, collaborate with an amazing experts like Andrew Hill, we're going to um, be introduced him to him in a moment here, um, then we could bring the best of the best together to co-create a single source solution for enterprise learning and development. So we now have um, over a thousand independent experts, coaching, training, OD consultants around uh, in, in every major metropolitan area in the U.S. and in key hubs globally. Um, when I went to my team and I said, what can we do for our clients, our peers, our friends that would be meaningful? Um, we all decided, let's throw a summit. Let's, we reached out to Andy and he didn't hesitate. He said, I'm in, you know, what's, what's the topic that's going to be the most relevant? And, and he decided, you know, behavior shifts. Let's talk about what that means during times of crisis. So we have 40 plus speakers. We're gonna be um, presenting those speakers every Wednesday and Thursday throughout April and now into May. So as much as we would like to get back to um, business as usual, we I think it's time we probably accept that it's gonna be business unusual for a little longer 
than any of us would like. So um, two very quick items I wanna mention. My team has um, put together a buy one, get one training specifically for managing your remote teams. It's all virtual crisis management, emotional intelligence, crisis communication plans, um, preparing for layoffs, business continuity, maximizing performance during unexpected unexpected complexity, et cetera. If this is of service, I would welcome the opportunity to share that with you. The other thing that we've put together is a name your own price outplacement program, coaching um, uh, and outplacement services. Uh, one module is for your retained leaders who are gonna have their own level of uncertainty and doubt and fear. Um, and then of course, if you're uh, part of the unfortunate ones that are having to lay off or furlough workers then um, and you're looking to offer them some solutions for getting back on their feet, we would welcome the opportunity um, to share some of our services, including this high touch meets high tech, hybrid digital and personal coaching packages for outplacement. So um, today our talk with Andrew Hill. Um, Andy is the founder of Potentia Works and he has had a long and successful career in Fortune 500 and management. He's also coached and consulted with many C-suite um, executives as well as business leaders, business owners, specifically in the area of optimizing their talent. He has been a professional coach and trainer since 2002. He is a certified professional behavioral analyst. And one of the things that I think Andy brings to his work and, and why we enjoy so much working with him is, is is Andy is a consummate professional. He is super knowledgeable about what it's going to take to create um, strong teams. He's also really um, mindful that there's no such thing as a one size fits all solutions. He believes in customizing his work to the individual, to the company, and, and, and frankly, our clients just love him. So Andy, thank you for joining us today. And what did I miss and what are we going to learn? Well, the only thing I'd add just on this slide is just uh, the reason I chose Potentia as a company name is it's Latin for power, energy, and influence. And I think that that's very symbolic to transforming raw power into um, of an organization into high capacity workforces. So right now we're, we're actually in a whole new situation where we're, we're upsetting the power curve and starting, starting again. So uh, most apropos, I think. <laughs> Hmm, to say the least. Okay, uh, let's get on right into the, uh, the main part of this. I, I like this graphic because it's kind of just reminded me of uh, the wavy place that we seem to find ourselves in right now. And when I talk about behavior shifts, um, I'm really talking today about how our normal behaviors shift under duress and we often don't realize what's happening to us and how we start to communicate with our teams um, is at risk. We, we can undermine stability and productivity if we're not aware of these things. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Excellent. So what we're going to cover, uh, a couple of things, just, yeah, we acknowledge times of uncertainty. Uh, there's challenges with working uh, at home, especially with the virtual model and the impact of the emotions on leaders and uh, work teams is uh, fairly critical. So communicating as a leader under crisis uh, conditions uh, requires um, mindfulness and good, uh, good focus in order to um, handle the situation well. Ultimately, what we hope is out of this experiences that, that we're going through is that you know, we'll have stronger, more productive teams when we're all done with this. Because typically, the old adage is, you know, um, no, no pain, no gain. We're going to gain out of this. We're just not really sure how. So, in the midst of all that, at least focusing on um, our communication styles can help. And especially for the fact that, um, you know, the, your leadership styles can often be strained and extended due to a crisis like this. And we're gonna look at that, um, about what we can do about it. Um, so some of the takeaways um, is that we're gonna look at the behavior-based communication styles. Um, that's gonna be based on the DISC model. Um, learn how stress affects each one of those, how communication will shift under duress, and then how you can increase self-awareness and regulate your responses better. That'll lower team stress and be, uh, allow you to be more productive and harmonious. What do we know? 
Okay, we know uh, things have really changed due to the virus. Um, we don't know how long it's gonna last. Right now there's this uncertainty about how long will we have to operate this way? And you know, most organizations are social distancing. That's gonna be a word that we'll um, never forget. <laughs> and one we didn't even know about uh, two months ago. And human beings are social creatures. So we're having to rely on virtual tools in the process. But this last bullet is really important. We, through studies, we know that the message in communications is very complex. 7% is based on words, 30% on tone of voice, and 55% on body language. So you can just imagine in our virtual world, what's, what's missing now in this communication dialogue. So I wanted to um, uh, ask a question before we jump into the next slide for, for the audience is, from a recent stu uh, Gallup study, what percent of U.S. employees agree that leadership communicates effectively? So if we could just kind of weigh in on that, percentage of U.S. employees that, that agree that their leadership communicates effectively with them. All right, I see some answers coming in, but I have to say that I'm gonna take a guess, and I know you're not gonna tell me yet, but I, I, I'm gonna say 30%, and we've got some 50%, 65%, um, 20%, 0%. <laughs> <laughs> okay, those are, those are some good numbers. Uh, unfortunately, our low number was closest to it. It's 13%. 13. So what does that tell us? That tells us that there's a trust deficit. That's big. You're working remotely and, you, and teams are lacking trust. What can we do to build that trust back up? Um, so, and we can't do it through physical contact anymore. So we're gonna have to look at how we can fill in the gaps um, to do that. So the challenge here is um, we're missing some key com components for that effective communication. Uh, words are just a small part of it, okay? So the potential for misunderstanding, poor decisions and conflict is actually very high especially when we look at that trust number being so low. Um, and as a leader, it's critical to minimize this effect for productive performance. So um, what we're gonna be doing is using the DISC model, a, a time proven uh, method to um, see how um, that the extension of your behavioral style under duress um, can, if once you catch it and are mindful and, and take some, um, self-regulation around it, you actually can build that level of trust and productivity with your group uh, quite a bit, right? Uh, we also know that um, there are four emotional needs of employees. And I just wanna identify those because typically every one of your disc style is gonna come back to a primary emotion. And so that's kind of our portal for how we um, are I guess, seeing the world, perceiving the world through, through our emotions, okay? So the four emotional needs are trust, trust in their leaders. So they need to trust in predictable behaviors, really important right now. Uh, leaders need to demonstrate compassion and understanding for each person and realize that the, each person is unique. We also need to provide stability and hope. So that's, that's kind of where we get to at this point. Let's just jump into the DISC model. Um, so again, this is uh, based on William Marston's uh, research many years ago. Um, and this, this DISC model is used widely uh, through uh, many organizations for insights into how people, um, how people behave. Um, because how you behave is going to tell you how you communicate, how you make decisions, uh, all, kinds of, all kinds of things like that. So there's quite a wealth of information that comes out of it. And what William Marston uh, mentioned to us is that all people exhibit all four behavioral factors in varying degrees. And DISC is again, measuring how you see yourself and how others perceive you. Kind of a key point here is your ability to interact with others may be the difference in success or failure as a leader. Okay, um, I'm gonna go over these specifically in the next slide. So. Here we have a chart of the DISC model. And I, what I wanna mention is that there are um, 
there are going to be some primary needs and emotions that come out of these that we want to be cognizant of. And I'll just kind of walk through how this is laid out. You'll notice the mid midline here. I think I'm going to take a laser here. So you notice this midline. Um, this is actually what we consider the energy line. So if I'm above this line, I get more energy, for example, in this one, with problems and challenges. However, if I'm below the line down here, I tend to be a little more he hesitant and cautious about things. Um, so that's an example of what this midline is doing. And you can see that the degree as you move up the scale or down the scale is, ten you know, is going to tell you whether you're, how active this is um, in your life. What I also wanted to point out is the dominance, how, how a person responds to problems and challenges. The primary emotion that goes with that is anger. So if I'm, if I'm a high dominance person that's a very results oriented, fast paced results, um, and I'm thwarted in getting the results I want, I can get angry. And so any of you high Ds out there probably know what I'm talking about right now. Um, if I'm a high influencer, I really thrive on people and contacts. Influencing has a lot to do with being uh, emotional, interactive, verbal, expressive. And so that high influencer um, is optimistic. That's the primary emotion is optimism versus down below it's pessimism. Somebody down in this area would be, for example, uh, wouldn't try to persuade with uh, a, an emotional verbal response. They'd probably use facts and figures and data in order to get their point across. Okay. Okay. The um, third one is pace or uh, for pace and consistency is, is what um, you know, drives our steadiness and a steadiness people they're what they're looking for is um, a sense of safety and security some predictability is really important the, the emotion is actually non-emotion so if you work with somebody who's high in steadiness you may not get the facial response that you're expecting and if not that they're not feeling it or having that experience it's just they're not demonstrating it to you so you can imagine in a virtual platform how difficult that could be yeah especially if it's seven percent words and all that other stuff. You know the body, the body language and tone. You know you're gonna you're gonna be losing a lot of this person's personality there. And our last one is our compliance side that that are responding really well to procedures and constraints. Um, and what they're really looking for, their highest need is accuracy. They want they want to be accurate and correct on things and not make mistakes. Uh, the associated uh, emotion is fear, fear of being out of compliance, fear of being wrong. Um, typically they're not. <laughs> so that's where we get to. Um, each one of these in our new world that we're living in is responding differently to the crisis. I'll get into that just a minute. Uh, this last chart just kind of shows a, a little different picture of where people land on the wheel. Um, and I thought it might be kind of interesting for people right now that are aware of their prevalent disc style, if they, uh, if they know where they would land on the circle. Secondly, if you're working with others, how do you recognize um, and understand where your team members lie? Mm -hmm. You know, are they precise and analytical or do they just happen to be high influencers? Um, and you notice on the outside, what we have is that there's the combination between these two, for example, a C and a D here would be they're task oriented and they like challenges mm -hmm. versus over here, extroverted and fast paced for the D's and the I's and likewise around. So uh, the key to all of this is adapting your style to meet others where they are so that you, that they get what they need. Therefore they give you what you need. Mm -hmm. One other question I was going to ask people, they don't have to respond to this through the chat, but you know, it might be healthy for, for people to think about what's their most critical work relationship. In other words, who is that person that's most critical that they work with? Is it a boss, a team member, or an assistant? And think about where they land here and, and just reflect, am I, am I meeting them where they are? Because I, if I am, I'm bringing down the, the, the tension and anxiety between us, and that's going to be helpful as we move on. And when you say meeting them where they are, let's say we have someone in our life, um, my husband, for example, very dominant, very assertive, 
Um, uh, so, uh, and, and I happen to also be an ID, depending on who you ask, or DI, like right on that edge. <laughs> so when you say meeting them where they are, um, do you mean accepting them for their dominance or their direct assertiveness or accepting them for their steadiness? What, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean shifting your behaviors to be more like theirs. So let's take an example. Okay. Um, if I'm a high, high dominance person here, and I'm, let's say that uh, I'm working with a high compliance person, that's not ordinarily a very easy connection because the dominance person's about getting things done quickly, maybe even skipping over some steps, but getting results at any cost, whereas my high compliance person wants to be thorough and, and accurate and detailed in what they do. So if I'm, if I'm the leader over C, what I'm going to probably do is slow it down a little bit, allow for that person's input, let them give me a plan, and then respond to it rather than just kind of barking out the orders. So hopefully that yep. example works. Yeah, So you, and that's what you're going to share with us is how adapting to another person's style actually helps us get more of, we, of what we want <laughs> accomplished. Exactly. Uh, collaboration happens, et cetera. Is that right? That's right. Thank Good question. So what happens? Okay, so in this slide, I'm showing that we have uh, our natural style is basically our nurtured self in a bubble, if you will, where our needs are getting satisfied. We, we, we're like ourselves. Um, it's like typically how we are at home. Um, but when I adapt my style, I'm trying to meet the needs of others typically, and that's changes to meet the demands of the environment. So now we're in a situation where it's an uncertain environment and people are, are the extension and stressing of their natural style is leading to some, some poor communication that's not helping with team play. Mm -hmm. um, so the, I've broken this up into a couple slides here is how to take control of your stress. And I wanted to just walk through um, each style and just kind of walk through kind of a what to do and what not to do. And I thought that might be helpful just to general review. So if I'm a high dominance leader, for example, or even a team member, um, if I sense that there's a lack of urgency, I tend, to, I tend to get into fight mode or even flight. But a productive response would be take a breath and relax and be open to input. Um, we also know that high dominance people, you know, are very goal oriented. So if their goal is being blocked, what happens? They get arrogant, probably speak out. One thing they could do is include others in those decisions. So in other words, open up a little bit and say, are there other options I'm not thinking about here? That level of inclusion tends to draw the team in. Um, down in the influencing side, uh, let's say for example, right now, um, I'm an interactive high people person and I'm stuck at home. So what happens? I don't feel very valued anymore. I don't have that constant interaction that, that I thrive off of. Okay, so what uh, an uh, productive response could be, I get really emotional, I get upset about it. You know, I tell everybody about it. But what you could do is open up with the team and minimize the talking, listen more, okay? And um, we also see that's pretty common to, this one down here not being listened to, what, what can happen if I'm, if I'm not being listened to? I start to overextend and become overly talkative. So the answer is slow it down and say, what do I need? You know, ask the team what you might need. That'll be helpful to get some interaction and input that, that you're looking for. On the, uh, the next level, these are the S and the C. This is our introverted side where the Previous slide was, we're talking about our extroverted folks. Um, high steadiness, okay, pace and consistency. The use of time is really important. So what happens when, for example, there's a change and there's a loss of stability like we have right now? Could be a very, very tough reaction on their part. Um, oftentimes we see people uh, high in steadiness are, are very possessive. And um, so they may hold on to information and not share as freely because they're afraid of it being taken away and misused. Um, productive response from that would be speak up and share your ideas. You know, we often say with 
how do you how do you get a high steadiness person to open up more? Ask them how how questions. How do you think we might do that? So that would be helpful if you have someone on your team like that. So recognizing that you have someone on your team that might be an S would would look like recognizing their stressors or there are potential unproductive responses and and you're you're suggesting give them solutions for engaging like yeah. asking, asking yeah. them how, how would you respond to this you're and encouraging them your opinion matters we want to hear from you yeah and especially you think about if they're on a zoom call you know it's easy to kind of have it fractured and you know we all have our little windows all over and yes it's getting f focused really and so it's it would be one where the, you'd want the team leader to call them out hey bob um what are your thoughts on on revising this process now that we're in a new work modality draw them out mm -hmm. okay um, all right unpredictable futures big stressor for all of us right now particularly hard for the steadiness, they may be hesitant and slow to respond. So if I, for example, if I'm a high dominance um, team leader um, and they're, they're not moving fast enough for me, I can get frustrated, but I need to realize that they, they want to slow it down. And so one thing that that person can do is learn to say no or renegotiate the terms of, of the demand or the conversation that's going on. And then uh, lastly, the high compliance, um, just going to pick a couple out here. Um, inf insufficient information. Well, there may not be a lot of information right now. Right? We could be kind of stuck on that. They may go into avoidance because without the information, they don't move. Mm -hmm. What could they do? Be more personable, sociable, and again, draw input in to get some ideas on how to move out of that um, modality. And another one, um, well, I like this one, emotional people. Well, there's a lot of stressed emotional people out there right now. I think we're all pretty aware of that and trying to work with, with the unknowns. Um, so what they don't typically respond well to, to the emotions. They tend to be cooler about those things. And so they could be defensive when criticized. They need to be more open to feedback. Okay. Okay. Um, so here's just kind of some examples of the team interaction stress test. And I don't know how we're doing on time, but I thought I might just doing hit. Good. Okay, so let me hit it just a couple of these. Um, so let's just say, for example, that you are a high dominance uh, team leader and you are interacting with a high compliance engineering team during a Zoom meeting. An unaware um, high dominance team leader might try to force his agenda too quickly on the team, as in we missed the deadline or we're way behind, we've got to pick up the speed, don't worry about all the details, you know, we'll fix it later. That will that will just make this team go cold. Yeah. So what high, the, the more self-aware high D team leader would say, okay, let me get some input from you guys. You know, we do have we do have to act with urgency. It is a different workplace, but let's do it in a systematic way write up a plan and get it back to me in, you know, a certain amount of time, and then we'll talk about it again. You know, he can, in other words, break it up and allow them to be systematic steps rather than this big overarching demand. And you um, have to, yeah, so folks have to really fine tune their awareness of those four styles and what kind of team they're working with and, and the people on the team um, in order to be mindful enough of, you can't just say, hey, we got to get this out the door yesterday. So wrap it up, buddy. I don't care what the details are, is what you're saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That that will demotivate the team entirely. Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, let's just take this third one here. A high steadiness manager is, is instructing a high dominant staff person to revise a work at home policy. Well, high steadiness is going to take a more slower, um, process-oriented way of doing this. Um, and that may be a little bit frustrating to the high dominant staff person who just wants to get it done. So a key for this high steadiness person would be to say, I know this is really important. We need to move fast on it. I just need you to be able to revise, get me the revision back. Let's review it with the team and then we'll, we'll escalate it to the next step and just move through it quickly. That's the kind of thing the high dominance person is going to want to hear. If they, hear, if they heard, just take your time, 
don't worry about it. We don't even have a deadline. It's not going to work. Mm -hmm. um, any others on here that you want to discuss or shall we just? Yeah, so, so tell me a little bit about how to recognize you have a high influence manager. Um, you, you talked about the, the line, right? And I think that that's probably how a person can begin to, to fine tune their awareness of the different styles. Is that right? If they tend to be. Right. Um, I'll give you the real, the real quick. Yeah. Answer. High dominance person is going to be fast paced moving and they're going to be driven to get results. They're okay. active. They're, they move fast. Okay. Okay. A high influencer is going to be talkative. Okay. Very expressive. And you'll see that right away. Um, the high steadiness tends to be uh, it's going to be quieter, not as much emotion, and will want to just take things more methodically. Okay. Um, and high compliance, um, again, introverted, but likes to work with data. Um, and how you're going to notice it, quieter, more reserved, like their privacy. In fact, they're the happiest right now of being at home at working. This is great, actually, for a lot of them. Okay, yeah, all right. Because they don't have to interact with people now. They yeah. can leave them alone. So we have to watch out for that, though, because it could, actually could become a problem. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So I, does that answer your question? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. Let's go to the next one, then. Uh, so there is an exercise that people can qualify to uh, get downloaded from, from me on this one. And this is just an example of it, but I'm going to encourage people to um, take a look at your team, uh, figure out where they are on the chart. And if you need to take a, the actual disk assessment, um, certainly we can provide those for you. But the, with the idea of it being, um, how can you um, leverage that person's um, position on the team the best? How, how do you coach them? You know, what works, what doesn't work in their communication? And then how can you manage and motivate them? Mm -hmm. So again, I mentioned before, you know, um, are you willing to adapt your behavior to meet them where they are? And are, do you, is your team transparent enough that you could sit down with an exercise like this and uh, share your notes and say, how do we all work together now? Because this is the new frontier. What do we, what do, we do? Having a tool like this can, can actually um, facilitate much better communication between the team. Because suddenly what you're sharing with us, you know, in our, some of our earlier um, talks today, um, for example, with Mark Freeman, it was about recognizing when um, uh, we're not adapting to the needs of the moment. And in this situation, it's recognizing when our style differs from a coworker, a teammate, someone that we need to have influence with. Um, not just pushing through and, and, and acting like, well, they're wrong. They need to adapt to me. It's, you're teaching us a methodology if you can simplify how you perceive other people in one of these four zones then you know what their needs are or you know how to how they behave and therefore you can meet them where they are yeah your behavioral style actually uh, does signal what your uh, wants and needs are and okay. we know through emotional intelligence that that that's what human beings are we're constantly seeking to get our needs met and the more they're met the more productive and happier um, and more connected we are with people. Very good. So in closing, uh, here's some tips uh, for working remotely from a, from a pro that I know that's been doing this for six years um, voluntarily. And so she had some recommendations. Um, the four that she mentioned were, first one, allow some time for socializing. You know, especially if you're a high influencer and you're stuck at home, get on the phone, do whatever you need to do to keep your dialogue going. Okay. Yeah. Maybe even conduct five or six Zoom calls in a row. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who does that. <laughs> yeah. um, second one, make technology work for you. You know, you're on a thin string right now. Make sure you've got a good internet connection. You know, your computers are working properly, that you're using the right virtual tools that support your style. Okay. Uh, third, adapt your communication style. Okay, we've We've gone over that. That's a biggie. It's just, you know, be willing to shift, shift a little bit in order to get more con connectivity with your, with your team. And last part is um, create and practice effective routines at home. So for those that aren't used to working at home, it's time to build structure, time blocking, you know, use your outlock, 
Outlook uh, calendar, whatever you use to block things out and stay kind of focused on that. It'll keep you from going astray and demotivating as you go. Very good. And that's, uh, that's my last slide before the offer. So I do uh, have a couple of questions. Um, we have a few minutes. Well, uh, maybe stop showing the slides for a moment and let's talk just about some of your experiences. So one of the challenges that I, that I can imagine is that if you're not familiar with assessing um, your teammate, um, how, how do you go about figuring out? I, I, I understood the model around, okay, we've got some that are fast paced and slow paced. And maybe that's just it. Maybe it's um, fast versus slow. And then what are the others? Talkative versus reserved? Is that right? Yeah, I, I'd say you could also throw in um, introverted versus extroverted. Okay. Okay. So, so you can look at your teammate and, and I mean, that's pretty easy, right? You can say, is this a person that tends to be fast talker, fast paced, or is this a person that tends to be um, slower and uh, slower pace, not slower. That's not the right word. It's slower pace. And um, if I understood you correctly, and I have a little bit experience with this, but I'm by no means an expert. So the if I understood you correctly, the fast pace is either going to be high dominance or an I influencer. Correct. Okay. And then your slower pace are either going to be your folks who need steady or your folks who are compliance. Yes. Okay. So for another term, compliance and even dominance are kind of they're not really PC anymore. You might even substitute terms like for compliance, you might say um, conscientious. Is a good word. Ah, okay. Well, that was something too that over the years, um, this model has grown to be more appropriate and not, um, I wouldn't say PC because that's not what it's about. It's about is it useful or is it not? And it, there, there comes with uh, the term dominant um, an automatic assumption that this person is aggressive, right? Or this person doesn't care about other people's needs. And that's not accurate, right? Not at all. No, they can actually be very uh, empathetic and uh, personable, uh, but they have a drive to get things, get things done. And, you know, that's um, the very goal oriented. And so if the more self-aware that person is, let's call them direct instead of uh, dominant. So let's yep. say that direct person is, likes to move through things quickly and, get, and accomplish things you know, quicker than most other styles. It doesn't make them bad. It's just what happens is when a, a manager is unaware that he's like that, he can ostracize his teammates. It's really easy to do, okay? That's the key. It's yeah, so for example, like a good high dominance person was Patton. Patton was great on the battlefield. I don't think I'd want any other style out there, but he was terrible in the office. And he was terrible in the office because he wasn't able to adapt to the other styles. He used the same battlefield style. Exactly. That was successful in one arena and, mm -hmm. and came back and that didn't work. So talk to us a little bit about adapting around the horn, so to speak. Um, how does a person develop that skill set of just one step around the horn and then another step around so that A, the, 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 what you shared with us is one, you have to start learning how to recognize your teammates fast. Okay pace slow slower pace introverted uh, sorry intro, uh, extroverted introverted so recognizing that mm -hmm. um and then also what do you do when you recognize it tell me here's the real real thing i think i'm asking you mentioned earlier that these styles indicate their needs also what what it is they need from someone how do we learn more about that well I think the best way, frankly, is to take a disc assessment. And um, the, the ones that I really prefer to use are made through TTI Success Insights, and they, they cover all that in great detail so that you can, um, you don't, it takes a lot of the guesswork out. I mean, now you've got the scientific, you know, objective data behind it, which is helpful because it's, other than that, it's, it's I've done training sessions with teams and we spend sometimes hours on this in order to really ingrain it in them. So it's, it's not a simple answer, but there are some really good tools out there. And there's some things that I use when I do training that um, reinforces it. It's just 
unfortunately, I don't have a slide that I could show you some of that with today, but. Uh, Would you go back to, go back to that slide though, where you show the D, the I, the S, and the C, and, and it was, yeah, pretty early on. That one right there, though, mm -hmm. well, that one works too. Oh, you, you, you think of this it one? The, it was the next one, the, the one with the little round guy, the little, the little new. So task oriented, challenging, extroverted, fast paced, introverted, slower paced, people oriented, cooperative. So let's say a lot um, in my experience, many leaders um, that are working inside fast paced organizations um, are in the D zone, not all, but sometimes many of them. And that is because they have a, 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 a super sense of urgency. Do our other styles not have that same sense of urgency or is that an, uh, that's a, a myth? Yeah, they do not. Okay. No, that's um, typically you'll see that uh, high dominance managers get there because they're pretty aggressive mm -hmm. and they're very goal oriented then. And frankly, you know, that, that can be a, uh, a problem as well as a gift. Um, so, um, but you do see a lot of people in that area because they, they're driven to get that level of success and they'll move right up the ranks with it. So let's say that someone that's an S wants to move up the ranks um, and they recognize perhaps I'm too easygoing, perhaps I'm too amiable, and perhaps my career goals are gonna suffer because of that. Is that something that occurs? Yeah. Um, but a, a high steadiness, I would say self-aware um, person who wants to say move into management or a leadership position will know that. And in fact, it's interesting that high steadiness probably make uh, the best managers to work for because they're, they're very open and easy to talk to. They're very accepting. But the challenge that that person would have is that they need to be much more plan and plan focused. In other words, plan out what their steps are going to be to get there and knock them off like one at a time. There won't be any big leaps. It's going to be a methodical approach. But if they've got that goal or that plan in front of them, they'll get there and they won't make as many enemies along the way either. Hmm. And so, so being a, um, folks, if you're on the call with us, please don't hesitate to ask some questions. And I think that the entire point here, right, and you correct me if I'm wrong, Andy, is to understand your team, understand there's only four styles that we've got to think about here. It's not like we're asking folks to, to, to memorize 50. We're talking four styles of behavior preferences. And if we can identify our teammates' preference, then we can adapt around this wheel to become more effective. And in yeah. fact, that's what today, today's work environment requires. Absolutely so, requires it. So talk to me a little bit about, let's say that I have a teammate that is um, opposite. So I, I know that I'm in the ID. So let's say that I've got someone that's slower paced, that, that doesn't have that sense of urgency. And we've got a project that we really need to get done. Other than snap out of it, this is important, you know, <laughs> get it together, get on yeah. board with me. What, what exactly am I supposed to do to move to them and, and get the job done? Yeah, you know, I, one of the areas that I've had training in is, is uh, not nonviolent communication that teaches you a technique for... I'm not asking about nonviolence. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I think some of those some of those tools are helpful too. It's just knowing that um, practice empathy, being in the other person's shoes, trying to feel figure out what is that like for them, and then being able to have a pretty candid, open conversation with them about it. So, the approach I would take if it was say I'm a high influencer or, and dominance, and I have a steadiness person working for me, I would probably sit down and say, "Here's what I'd like to talk about. Here's my natural." behavioral style. These are the things that drive me. Um, let's talk about what drives you. And it, can we find a compromise in here that works for both of us? You know, I need a steadiness person behind me to keep me grounded and structured in what I do, because I tend to jump all over the place, maybe. And so that person would feel value in supporting you. They probably don't have any need to be leading you. They just want to be a really strong coordinating support person. 
And you, you would just want them to be cognizant of the drives that you have as well. So it's really about having open dialogues um, a, a, about your awareness of my tendency is X, your tendency is Y, or what do you think your tendency is? How yeah. can we meet in the middle to, to work more productively, collaboratively? Yeah, because a lot of times, like, you know, this is like straight out of uh, the Four Agreements by Miguel Ruiz. It's like we're making yeah. assumptions all the time about people. Yeah. And you know something? We're not, most of us aren't psychic and we're not right half the time. So why not just use some good, good communication to reach out and say, how did that land for you? Did I, you know, was that, a, did I give you a good directive? Was it, was I confusing? Um, what do you need in order to move hmm. with this process? You know, it's like start using just some open uh, communication. Like that. Brilliant. Very good. Well, this has been very informative. I know that you have prepared several special offers um, uh -huh. for people. Um, share with people what you've prepared for us and how they can get a hold of you. Okay, uh, three different items, and there we'll take this first one. Um, the uh, one free offer that I have, courtesy of TTI uh, Success Insights, is a free um, link to an assessment called Working from Home, and. So um, they offered it to me and I thought I would just offer it to you. They're doing this to try and help the world through this, through the challenge nice. we're having right now. It's great. Nice. So what it, uh, the assessment has on one page, it's, uh, it's all behavioral based. So you'll take it, you'll take an input that's like a disc assessment. It'll give you one page on how you should um, structure your homework environment to be at your best based on your style. Um, and then there's several pages after that that will give you um, uh, instructions for how to work with a high dominance, low dominance, you know, high influence or low, low influence. Okay. So that's really nice. Um, and that's free. So you can see that that's the link right there that people are welcome to click on that. Um, and the second one is the um, a drawing for the leadership development kit. And that's going to be those worksheets that I showed you in the slide about uh, diagnosing your team, identifying where they land on the chart. And there's some really good uh, worksheets for how a leader uh, can work with this team. So I think we're going to do a drawing for those. Um, yes. And the system will automatically identify randomly registrants and send that out, notify you, and then you'll be in touch with them. Yep, absolutely. Uh, the last one, my exclusive offer, this is based on just trying to help people through this time with greater awareness, which will greatly uh, reduce their stress and anxiety. It's uh, one called the Trimetrics EQ, uh, and, it, and I'm gonna include four coaching sessions around it for half off the normal price. So wow, this, that's great. This, yeah, this one focuses on, um, will focus on change during the crisis, and it's gonna look at your behavioral style, motivational style, and your emotional intelligence all wrapped up um, together in one assessment. So it, it integrates all those together. It's a fantastic tool. Um, it's going to help you weather the storm, higher sense of self-awareness, uh, new, new tools to lead and better understand other people. So Beautiful. Just, just an optimum tool for, for um, someone to use. So that's usually $2,500 uh, for the whole series. And I'm going to do it for $1,250 for at least the, the rest of this month. That's fantastic. Thank you for that, Andy, yeah. very much. Um, well, this has been very informative. Um, you guys reach out to Andy. Um, there's his information on the screen, uh, ahill at potentia.works uh, and is right as his phone number down there. Andy, thank you. This has been, um, you know, much more, uh, I, I'm familiar with this material, but we really talked about adapting our styles around the horn, so to speak, in ways that I hadn't considered before. So. Um, so thank you. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day and stay safe and healthy. <laughs> I've lost my, pa my control panel. <laughs> uh oh, I know. There it is. <laughs> thank you, everyone. <laughs>